This video is all about creating graphs in Adobe Illustrator like the ones in this example. We'll cover how to create all the available graphs, how to combine them and how to stylize them. I've set up some sample data to work with for this video. We got the world's most spoken languages in millions. Then we have the most popular pets where the data will change year after the year. And we also have the world's population age in percentages. Now let's get started with creating the first bar based graph. You can find the graph tool over here in the tool panel. Right click on it and then you'll see all the available options. The first thing we'll do is the column graph tool. You can either click on it and determine the size or you can drag it in. Now this will open up a window where we can import the example data we've shown earlier. So we're going to copy and paste the world's most spoken languages into this spreadsheet in Illustrator. Then when we click the check mark, the data will be applied to the graph. Now let's see what buttons we have here. We have the import data button, which will let you import the CSV files. And we also have the transpose button, which will switch the columns with the rows, which will also affect the appearance of the graph. So when you click on this and hit the check mark again, you'll see the updated version of the changes you've made in the spreadsheet. And in the spreadsheet, we also have a button available where we can change the number of decimals and we can also change the width of each column. So this added two decimals to the data. And if you don't want that, you can set it to zero digits. So this is like the most basic version of this graph. Now let's have a look what happens when we will import some more challenging data. Copy the pet statistics and paste it into the spreadsheet in Illustrate. Now hit the check mark to apply the changes. Now this does not look like a clarifying graph, so let's change the rows with the columns with the transpose button. Now this looks more clarifying. But as you can see, the font is not readable. You can change the font size at any time as long as the graph is selected. Later on in this video, we will get into more detailed customization for the graphs. But for now, let's have a look at some basic options first. To select a group within the chart, select the group selection tool by right clicking on the direct selection tool in the tool panel. Now double click on one of the groups in the legend of the graph and every element of the graph that associates with this group will be selected. And now you can easily change the color. So let's do that again. In short, select the group selection tool, double click on the group that you want to select, and then you can make changes to the color of this group. Now let's have a look on other basic options we have for each type of graph. Other basic options can be found when right-clicking the graph and select Type. Here you can add a shadow for instance, which will add a drop shadow to your design, which in this case is not very appealing, but can be useful in some other cases. One of the other options we have is to change the location of the legend. You can put it at the top if you want to. What's also important to know is that if you want to make changes to the data again, you can right click the graph and go to data. Now let's have a look on the other available bar based graphs. Copy and paste this graph by holding down alt and drag on underneath. Now select the new graph, right click and go to type. Now besides the basic changes you can make here, you can also choose a new type of graph. So let's choose the stacked column graph and click on OK. Now you'll see that it will automatically update in the new graph. And the beautiful thing is that the colors and the changes you've made earlier are being kept and put in the new design. Now the final options for the bar based graphs. We have the bar graph tool and the stacked bar graph tool which basically is the same design, but then in a horizontal view.
Moving on from the bar base graph, we're going to have a look at the line graphs. Locate the line graph tool over here in the tools panel. You can either click anywhere on the artboard to determine your own size, or you can drag in a size. Now this will pop up the data window again, where we can add the data from the example sheet. Now when the data is shown like this, there is not much use for this graph. So let's switch the axis by using the transpose button and get a clear year by year view of the data. Now with the line graph in place, let's have a look again on some of the basic changes we can make at the type menu. Select the graph, right click and go to type. We have the standard options for stylizing to add a drop shadow or change the position of the legend. But we will look into that later with a more detailed customization. You can uncheck mark data points if you want just the line without the data points marked. And the other thing you can do is have edge to edge lines where it will stretch the line from the beginning to the end of the graph. Draw filled lines if you want a filled object instead of a stroke. Now let's see how to change the color of one of the groups. Select the group selection tool over here in the tools panel. By clicking on one of the groups in the legend, you will select every color associated with this group. Now you can make changes to the color. So let's do that again real quick. So with the group selection tool selected, double click on one of the categories and make changes to the color. Now let's copy and paste this line graph and select the area line graph by going to type and then select the area line graph. This area graph is quite the same as the line graph, but it uses filled closed contours instead of strokes. You run into this problem that the first area covers the rest of the areas, go to type and then select first column in front. And then click OK, and then you will get a good view of the data. It's kind of like the line graph combined with the stack bar graph. Now let's have a look at the scatter graph. The scatter graph is the final graph that we will look into when it comes to line graphs. It can be used when displaying the outcome of multiple groups. So I will type in some data so you will see how the scatter graph works. In the top row, you type the name of the groups. So we have group A, group B, and group C. Underneath the groups, you fill in the y-axis data, which is the age, and the x-axis data, which will be the amount of pets. Now I will fast forward to filling in some data so you can see what will happen to the scatter graph and see what options we have. Now this gives a clear picture of the progression of the age and the amount of pets. We got the data points of all the groups. We got the age and we got the amount of pets on the x-axis. We can also get a stroke in between the data points to get a more clear view of the progression of the groups. To do that, right click, go to type and then select connect data point. So this was the final line graph, now we're moving on to the Pi and Radar graph. So right click on the graph icon in the toolbar and select the Pi graph tool. You can either click to determine the size or simply drag in the size that you need. This will open up the data window where we can fill in the example data we've prepared earlier. Now when we import and click on the check mark, you will notice that it does not give the effect we've hoped for. To fix this, simply click the transpose button, which will switch the rows with the columns. Now when we click on OK again, you will see that the pie graph is created. When you want a comparison between multiple pie graphs, we need to alter the data a bit. So select all the data, cut it and paste it, skipping the first row. In the first row, you can give the names for the tags of the pie chart. So we're creating a before and a after and fill in some data for the after. Now when we click on OK, you will see that two pie graphs are created. Now let's have a look on the options we have for the pie chart. Select the graphs with the selection tool, right click and go to type. 
in the type menu, you can find the style options for each type of graph. So we can add the legend across the top or we can add a drop shadow. With a pie chart, we can also choose for no legend or we can put the legend in the wedge itself, the circle. To make the font more clear in the circle, you can choose the direct selection tool or the group selection tool and select all the text in the circle and give it another font color. We'll go through some more in-depth customization option at the end of this video. For now, let's have a look on the final chart, which is the radar graph chart. So we're going to copy this by holding Alt or Option, right click on it and select Type. Then we're going to select the radar graph tool. You can see that this data does not give the effect we want to have. So let's get into the data by right clicking on the graph and go to Data. Then we're going to click on the transpose button to switch the rows with the columns. And now when we update the graph, you can see that this gives a more clear image. To get the before and after differences more visible, we have to alter some data. Now close this window and select the graph again. Now let's have a look on the other graph specific options we have for the radar graph. The data points are the squares on the end of each line. So you can either make that visible or hide that. You can choose for the filled lines, which will create a closed contour instead of a stroke. And if you want to work with the data points only, you can do that by hiding the lines by going to type, deselect connect data points and select the mark data points. So now we've covered all the available graphs. Let's have a look on combining the graphs. To combine a graph, first select the category in the graph with the direct selection tool. Double clicking on the group in the legend will select all the data related to that group. Now go to object, graph and select type. Here you can select a new type of graph that will be applied only to the selected group. So the result is a bar based graph combined with a line graph. So in short, select one of the groups by double clicking with the group selection tool, go to object, graph and select type and choose a graph style that will be only applied to the selected group. And in this way we can combine multiple graphs. Now let's have a look for the final chapter on how to stylize the graphs. To change the size of the graph, select the graph with the selection tool then go to Object, choose Transform, and then Scale. This will let you scale and change the size of the entire graph. Every graph has got its own stylizing options, which can be found when right-clicking on the graph and then go to Type. So for this type of graph, we can add the legend across the top or we can add a drop shadow. To change the color of certain elements of the graphs, we're going to use the group selection tool, which can be found right here in the tools panel. To group select all the drop shadows, you can double click it. And you'll see that it will automatically select all of the drop shadows. Now you can easily make changes to the fill color or the stroke color. So remember that the group selection tool is the best way to select all the elements of the graph. Now we're using the group selection tool to colorize the different groups of the graph. Simply double click on one of the groups, which will select all of the colors of the graph from that group, and then we can change the color. And with the group selection tool still selected, you can also drag over multiple elements to change the position of these elements. You can also use the tools to select parts of the text of the graph and make changes to it, so making it bold, or change the font size or font color. To make changes to the font of the entire graph, get the selection tool, click on the graph, and then you can make changes to the font and font size. One final extra I want to show you is to use of 3D to stylize a graph. Select the pie chart with the group selection tool and apply a 3D effect.
And now with the 3D effect applied, you can use the group selection tool to drag out the elements of the graph. So this was my tutorial about graphs in Illustrator. I hope you learned something today and please consider to subscribe if it helped you.